All right. Well, you're tuning in to Financial Fitness Northwest live on 1150 KKNW. We provide our listeners with information from business professionals to bring solutions to your daily life and local charities to provide you with the opportunities to give back to your community as well. Now in studio, we have Heather Fritz and Karen Hansen. Heather joined Courage 360 in 2016 as Chief Executive Officer. She most recently served as the Executive Director of the Renton Technical College Foundation. Heather has over 20 years of leadership experience in the nonprofit and philanthropic. <laughs> Thank you, Fields. She firmly believes that with the right combination of strategy, passion, and leadership, the potential for nonprofits to create a brighter future for people in their community is unlimited. Heather holds a bachelor's degree in human services from Western Washington University and a master's degree in nonprofit management from Seattle University. Karen Hansen is the president of Wyman Associ Associates, working with individuals and businesses to help protect their investments, business, and family interests. She is very active in the community, serving on several boards for well-known nonprofit organizations, and Karen is the upcoming board president of Courage 360. Well, welcome. Welcome, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. We're really excited to to learn about Courage 360. Yes. So kind of give us like how it, how it got started and... Sure. Yeah. So back in 1982, four women who were friends and living in the same neighborhood, they were wives of Weyerhaeuser and Boeing executives, had um, watched a show that there was a nun back in Texas who had started a program that was workforce development, and it centered on supporting women who were on state support, getting trained to be able to get into the workforce and be self-supportive. And they looked at each other and said, hey, we can use that here. We have a lot of women on welfare. So they started what was WE, Washington Women's Employment and Education, and then Three decades later, it became Courage 360 when we were doing a branding exercise just to, at that time, strengthen the brand. And what came out of that was that the name Washington Women's Employment and Education was a little bit prohibitive of men getting receiving our services. And the strong word that came out of everybody's feedback was courage, that it wasn't about learning the skills and the traits. It was about the courage that was reinstilled re because often they say, it's not that I didn't have it, it's that you found it within me again. Mm -hmm. oh. So the name became Courage 360. I love that. I do too. It takes a lot of courage to start over, right? So yes. that's so, so pointed to what you guys do. So can you share with us, you know, who's the typical Courage 360 client? someone that's receiving services from you guys? Sure. So our average client is a single mom, age 34 to 36. We serve on, an, um, on a typical year, 94% of our participants are women. Okay. And we have a large portion of people of color, of people who have no high school education, high, education beyond high school, mm -hmm. um, individuals who have lived in generations of poverty. So it's it's typically the families that for generation after generation have been living in the same state of being dependent on welfare. Wow. That's awesome. So you guys are there to break the cycle. We are. And so how, how do you do that? What type of programs do you offer to the people? So our programs are based on a three-legged model. And so that um, evolves around an assessment and access to income supports. So, for example, if an individual comes in, they're screened to see if they are already receiving benefits that they qualify for. If they aren't and they qualify for them, we give them that access. So, for example, if they qualify for BFET, which is our food stamp program in the state of Washington, or if they qualify for transportation support or child care support by being on, on welfare or TANF. Um, we also give access... Moving forward, we'll be giving access to things like the earned income tax credit through United Way's free tax preparation sites, et cetera. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And then the second leg is the employment services. And employment services evolves around our five-week program, which is called Successful Pathways. Many people know it as REACH. Um, REACH Plus was our program when we were WE. And then this last year, we did a lot of studying on the strengths and the weaknesses and the opportunities for our program. And we learned that a full week, 35-hour-a-week class was really hard for our participants to, 
to take. It mm-hmm. didn't allow for life to happen mm-hmm. on the on the side. So we evolved to a hybrid format, and that is um, where participants spend three hours a day in class with instructor guided instruction, and then they do three hours of um, independent studies. We also do uh, our employment services, which is helping the participant guide their path once they've graduated the class. So that might be helping them access college, or it might be providing an internship for them, or helping them get into that first job. So you guys help place them in jobs? We help place them. We have various partners that we work with that provide either internships or employment, and we're always looking for more partners to partner with us to build that pathway into employment. Wow. And then the, the last leg is what ties nicely into this program is our financial side. So we do financial counseling and financial literacy, and that wraps around every part of the program that they're engaged with. Wow. So how do, how do people find you guys? How do these women find you? So they come a variety of ways. They will either come through um, referrals from their DSHS caseworker. Okay. They will come from referrals from former students. So our participants will often um, tell somebody else about the program that they're in or the program that they went through. And then um, just word of mouth, just word from, of mouth. from people. Mm-hmm. Wow. So who and are other you? agencies, I should say, as well. Okay. We have a lot of referrals from other agencies. Okay. How long? So it's, it's, it's pretty structured, right? So when mm-hmm. someone comes in, there's, you know, a very specific structure they go through. How long does the program last? Or is that dependent on the situation of the individual? It's very dependent on the situation. So when someone comes in that first step of assessing them, we find out what program that we offer is best for them. So it might be that five-week education program. It might be, they might come to us already referred into our internship program, which is a partnership through um, other agencies as well as the um, Department of Commerce to carry out the community jobs program. Or it might be that they really need support around homelessness. And so depending on what their urgent need is, that defines what program they come into first. And then what happens very naturally for our our participants is that they evolve from one program to the next. Mm-hmm. So they might they might come in thinking that the curriculum is what they were interested in, but they might really be struggling with homelessness. So they might receive our services on that end instead and then go into the successful pathways program, which might lead them into the community jobs program with internships and then on to a position in an agency. So what do you guys what is your program for home, you know, homeless women? And what do you guys provide shelter or So we have been in the past we've been rapid rehouser rapid rehousing um, provider and so that's been through the city and the county contracts that we carry. And that's where um, individuals are referred to us through a um, they have to be referred into us. Okay. And then we work with them to place them into housing units. And we support them with their moving costs, their monthly rents, et cetera. Oh, okay. The other program that we have is Family Permanency. And that's a 10-year a program that's coming to an end. Um, it was funded by a 10-year grant from the Gates Foundation. And on that side, we work just with individuals that are, <clears throat> excuse me, that are placed in um, one of 15 units that we manage. And we provide the case management for that side. So that work we hope to continue. We hope to work with funders to provide the ability for us to continue working with women and families who are homeless to provide the case management. Because once they're once they're housed, that's the number one issue. If we can't get them housed, success for them is is very minimal. Yeah. Yeah. So if we can work with them once they're housed, then we can support them in learning the behavioral habits that can really advance their lives. Yeah, I would think that would be absolutely critical. I mean, it's pretty hard. You don't, it's kind of like you don't have any foundation to build on. You need to have a stable place to live, and then you can kind of build from there. Yep. Hmm. So as far as all of these different skills that you're teaching them, who who is teaching them? Is this volunteers that come in, or how, how does that how does that work? So we have a core staff. We have instructors who are the key leads on all of our instruction programs. And then we also work with interns and volunteers as well that support the programs. But the design of the curriculum and the delivery of curriculum is from our staff. 
Wow. That's, this is a really um, amazing program. Are you guys, are you just rely on grants or donations? How do you guys get funding for this? So we get funding through a variety of ways. Our, <clears throat> excuse me, our contracts are um, funded. We have about five contracts that are funded either from um, city, county, state funding, um, trickling down from federal funding sometimes, or from our local and regional found foundations that support either a program that we're delivering or what every nonprofit dreams is that they'll support either capacity or general operating. And then we have our base of donors who contribute and um, they contribute time. I always say time, treasure and talent because they do um, money, monetary donations. They also give of their time and their expertise and their knowledge. Wow. Well, I was really fortunate enough to be able to attend your fundraising um, brunch or breakfast that you had and it was so amazing and the stories I mean having the panel of women that you had there that told their stories was just it was really so heart-wrenching and so so wonderful to see where they were and how they have progressed so do you have any like really inspiring story you could tell us about somebody I think that my most inspiring story um was who you got to hear at the breakfast her Mm -hmm. name was Violet And this was about six months into my um, work with the agency. So I had originally come on board as an interim executive director to do an assessment. And it wasn't long after they um, offered me the permanent position as CEO that I met Violet. She had come in to volunteer to be a mentor for our current students. She had been a former student, one of our alums. And she was sharing her story, unbeknownst to me at the time, for the very first time she'd ever shared it. And she talked about being a survivor of domestic violence and um, that she had come to our program through a referral of a friend. She was living in a um, women's shelter and fleeing from um, her abusive relationship that she was in. And she didn't think that she qualified for our program. She had been former military. She had been um, an engineer. She had been a manager. She was a a singer in a band. She was in a church. She had all of these things that had one time in her life been going really well. And at this moment in time, she had um, fleed a horrible relationship. She had found herself in jail where she asked to remain for three days instead of going home. Oh, my gosh. And then she found her way back into the shelter, referred to our program. She went through four weeks of it. Um, She was found, and she had to flee again and go into hiding and protection, and she um, went through one more five-week program, or one five-week program went on, and then she came back and took the entire five weeks again, even (laughs) though she'd gone through four, and she graduated. And then she went on to, um, for us, it was the first time we had had a, what was called a live resume, and it's where you have to go and present yourself in 60 seconds in a fishbowl, so to a room of employers sitting all around the exterior. Oh my gosh. And she presented herself. She had three people who approached her to interview. And within a week or two, she was hired as the secretary to the president of that engineering company. And she just celebrated her fourth year. Wow. Um, And so I asked her, I said, you know, how did you get that encouragement? What drove you to do that? And she pointed to the table and she said, right here, it was right here at Courage 360. And that's when I started to cry. And I looked yeah. at her and I said, I, I can't believe that, that that's where it all came from. And she goes, it was here. It's like a family being here. Oh. And so that was just, that's, that's my favorite story of all of the stories we Makes have. it all worth it, right? You Makes just feel like, that's it. why we do this. <clears throat> so Karen, you are the up and coming president of the board. What is that role going to mean for you? Um, it means that I'm highly active and suddenly I have a lot more responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Um, cause you've been on the board for I a have, number of years already, right? I have for three years. Mm-hmm. And so, um, while I've been on a number of committees and whatever, um, now I get to work in tandem with Heather to make sure that we're continuing to go in the right direction and are relevant to the community we serve. Um, obviously we're making some changes in how we deliver the program and going to the client as mm-hmm. opposed to having them come to us. And we need to continue to be able to make that happen. So the creativity that's happening with the staff and through Heather's direction is, I think, going to continue to make us relevant in the community we serve. That's great. So what is, are there any like new things coming up that you can share with us? 
um, I think I'll give that to Heather because she's got the handle on it and it's all in her head. <laughs> oh, it's in her head. Oh, Heather. It's, in my, it's in my head, <laughs> but the board is right there with me. Absolutely. Yes. Um, we do support. So what has occurred over the past year with Courage 360 is really looking at what we do really well and what we can strengthen and um, shift a little bit to do it even better. And so the the big overarching shift for Courage 360 is that we're really looking at how we can, instead of having people come to us by being a site-based agency, how can we sort of take ourselves and plant ourselves into the community all over the place? So I think of it as planting seeds and blossoming up. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is partnering with colleges, with other agencies and other entities to where we can deliver our services right on site for them. So we're working towards moving away from our two standard locations in Kent and Tacoma and instead being on site for colleges such as Tacoma Community College will be opening up a program July 10th. That's great. Mm -hmm. And then we just opened up our first Center for Strong Families um, about last August. United Way of of Pierce County invited us to um, apply to become a center. And we applied to be a center at our main office. And then I think it was within a month they asked us to consider piloting two other um, centers that they're considering. So we just opened up our first pilot out at Bethel um, Family Support Center. And that's in coordination with United Way and with the Bethel School District. And there's a audience of about 1,700 participants that go through that family center for services such as Visiting Nurse or WIC and other programs that we will now have access to to deliver our programs with our employment and financial coaching. And we do the financial coaching in collaboration with Sound Outreach um, to really help these families grow their assets, the The motto of United Way is to earn it, keep it, and grow it. And so that's what our programs are going to be doing. Oh, my gosh. That's so fantastic. We're so glad to have you guys here to share with us about Courage 360. Uh, Thank you so much for tuning into our show, Financial Fitness Northwest. When we come back, we're going to have the Riley Johnson team market update. Today we're going to discuss if you're getting ready to sell your home, are you considering if it's pet-friendly? For our, all our fur lovers out there. To find out about any topics discussed on today's show, you can find us online at www.financialfitnessnw.com. <laughs>